Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the protein binding and its significance. Whenever a drug is going to be administered into the body, the drug molecules are going to be present in the GI tract and they are going to be absorbed along the GI tract into the systemic circulation where the drug may be present as a free form. Now this drug can be bind to the proteins, otherwise it can undergo the metabolism. So when it is going to be metabolized, at most of the times it is going to become to inactive metabolites. So metabolism is one of the mechanism by which the drug action is going to be terminated. But at the same time, the drug can also bind to these proteins. When the drug is going to bind to these proteins, the drug can form a complex with the protein. Now it is present in the bound form. And sometimes this complex can be dissociated such that it again released as a free form of the drug. In this way, within the systemic circulation, the drug is present as a free form or as a bound form. The free form is the active form of the drug, whereas the bound form is the inactive form of the drug. So protein binding is a reversible process where the drug is going to be converted to inactive form on binding with the proteins and it is reconverted to active form when it is going to be dissociated from the proteins. The therapeutic action of the drug mainly depends on the free form or the active form of the drug. That's why the protein binding kinetics are very important in order to assess the kinetics of the drug as well as its therapeutic action in the body. So drug molecules within the systemic circulation, they can bind to the protein molecules. Suppose the drug molecules are going to bind to this protein and here you can observe few of the proteins are uh, free and they are not bound with the drug. Now we can draw one of the kinetic equation for this protein drug interaction. A drug is going to interact with the protein such that they are going to form a protein drug complex and this rate of association can be given by the rate constant Ka. Similarly, the protein drug complex can be dissociated to again reconvert into a free drug as well as the free protein. Now here the drug is available as a free form as well as bound form. Similarly, the protein is also available as a occupied as well as unoccupied. Here the total protein concentration P T is equal to the P that is the water of the protein concentration which is unbound plus the P D the protein concentration which is bound with the drug. Similarly, the total drug concentration DT is equal to the D plus PD, where D is the free drug concentration and PD is the bound drug concentration. Now here we can draw one of the fraction, the fraction of the drug unbound because the therapeutic activity mainly depends on the unbound drug. So we are interested on the how much fraction of the drug that is unbound with the proteins. So the fraction of the drug unbound F is equal to the concentration of the drug unbound by total concentration of the drug. So which is nothing but here F is equal to D by DT where D is the free drug concentration and DT is the total drug concentration. Now what is this fraction indicates? This fraction indicates how much of the drug is available as a free form compared with the total concentration of the drug and which is available to show its therapeutic action. And this fraction indicates the volume of distribution of the drug. If the drug is having the high concentration of the unbound form, then this fraction of the drug unbound is very high. Thereby, the volume of distribution is also very high. So higher volume of distribution indicates that the drug is not binding to the plasma proteins and it is going to be more distributed into the body. So extravascular distribution will be more when the drug is having the less binding with the proteins. In this way, this fraction of drug unbound indicates the volume of distribution, but it will not give the information about the kinetics of the protein binding. But here the volume of distribution depends on which type of protein is going to interact with the drug. Because the drugs can bind to the proteins which are present in the plasma, which we call the plasma proteins. Otherwise, they can bind to the few of the proteins which are present in the tissues, resulting in the tissue protein binding. So these are the plasma proteins. And this is the tissue having the different types of protein binding sites. Now the drugs can bind to these plasma proteins as well as they can also bind to the what are the protein binding sites present on the tissues. When the drug is going to bind to the tissue proteins, it can result in the therapeutic actions. Otherwise, it can produce the adverse reactions. When a drug bind to a target tissue only, it produces therapeutic actions. But generally, drugs going to bind to the other tissues which mainly result in the adverse reactions. So tissue protein binding mainly results in the adverse reactions which leads to the tissue toxicity. For example, paracetamol is one of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. 
which can bind to the liver proteins thereby it can produce the hepatotoxicity similarly amphotericin is one of the antifungal agent which can bind to the proteins within the nephron resulting in the renal toxicity in this way the tissue binding mainly results in the adverse reactions because the drugs are going to bind to the extravascular tissues so here the drugs can bind to the different extravascular tissues like the liver liver is one of the important organ where the drugs are going to be metabolized so many of the drugs can show their activity on the liver and if the drug is highly bound with the liver proteins it can produce a liver toxicity similarly other organs like the kidney kid renal system is responsible for the elimination of the drug so again the drugs can produce their adverse effects on the kidney similarly lungs many of the drugs can be exhaled out through the lungs therefore lungs can also be affected by protein binding similarly other tissues like the muscle skin hair follicles in this way so many types of uh, extravascular tissues can be affected by drug protein binding so here the tissue protein binding mainly results in the tissue toxicity so now we have seen that the drugs can bind to the plasma proteins as well as the tissue proteins but here again we can observe one more difference suppose if a competitive drug is there which is more lipophilic these drugs can compete with the first drug for plasma protein binding so suppose this more lipophilic drug is going to bind to this plasma protein it can displace the other drug from this protein binding sites so the free concentration of the first drug is going to be increased which results in the drug toxicity so more lipophilic drugs can produce the drug interactions at the plasma protein binding sites but at the same time these drugs are not competitive at the tissue protein binding and they cannot displace this uh, drug from the tissue binding so tissue protein binding will not result in the drug interactions this is another important point of difference between the plasma protein binding and tissue protein binding now we can see another difference at the volume of distribution if the volume of distribution is low what it indicates a low value of the volume of distribution indicates that the drug is going to be confined within the plasma so the drug will have more affinity toward the plasma proteins therefore the drug binds to the plasma proteins so a low volume of distribution indicates that the drug is more bound to the plasma proteins similarly high volume of distribution indicates that the drug is having the high affinity towards the tissue proteins now when the drug is going to bind to the tissue proteins it is not present in the plasma so it is more distributed into the extravascular tissues resulting in the high volume of distribution so a high vd value indicates that the drug is more bound to the tissue proteins but this volume of distribution is an apparent volume of distribution which indicates that how extent the drug is going to be distributed so a low vd indicates the drug is binding to the plasma proteins a high vd indicates the drug is going to bind to the tissue proteins now you can compare the plasma protein binding and tissue protein binding the if a drug is having the plasma protein binding it shows the low vd value low value of the volume of distribution and if it is highly bound to the tissue protein then it will have the high vd value similarly the interaction of the drug with the plasma proteins forms a weak bonds whereas the interaction between the drug and the tissue proteins is because of the strong bonds like the covalent bonds which are very stronger compared with the plasma protein binding since the interaction between the plasma protein and drug is weak the protein drug binding is a reversible process so drug can be easily detached from the plasma protein but in case of tissue proteins because of the strong bonds the process is irreversible so once the drug is going to bound to this tissue proteins it is not easily dissociated and it can produce some tissue toxicity and since the drug binding with the plasma proteins is a reversible process it shows a short half life whereas a tissue protein binding shows the long half life similarly when the drug is going to bind to the plasma proteins it will not result in any pharm classical actions so plasma protein bindings are mainly responsible for the distribution of the drug within the plasma similarly tissue protein binding also responsible for the distribution of the drug within the tissue which may result in the tissue toxicity because of the stronger interactions the drug may produce some tissue toxicity and already we have seen the drug interactions are possible with the plasma protein binding and drug interactions are not possible with the tissue protein binding and finally the plasma protein binding is a competitive in nature if a highly lipophilic drug is present it can displace one of the drug with low lipophilicity from the plasma protein binding sites which may result in the drug interactions but in case of tissue protein binding it is non competitive in nature so such type of drug interactions are not observed so these are the difference between the plasma protein binding and 
tissue protein binding so that's about the protein binding the protein binding mainly results in the distribution of the drug into the body the drug can bind to the plasma protein such that it is going to be confined within the plasma which results in the low volume of distribution otherwise the drug can have the high affinity towards the tissue proteins so that it is going to be more distributed into the extravascular tissues where it can strongly bind with the tissue proteins therefore it can result in some tissue toxicity so in case of high affinity towards the tissue proteins the drug will have high volume of distribution so in our next video we will discuss about the kinetics of this protein binding how this uh, protein and drug interactions can be explained based on few of the equations so that's for today if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video